Hi guys, welcome to the session on public administration. I'm pretty sure you guys have completed your degree and are excited to join the government services, especially the IAS. And as a result, you would have zeroed in even on your GS Foundation course and would be looking out for your optionals, isn't it? And you guys might be wondering which optional to choose. There is a certain requirement to choose an optional. Many people will say you should be knowing about the optional. Many people will say you should fall in love with the optional. You should have a romantic relationship with the optional. But most of them don't say whether the optional is going to help you or not. And how feasible the optional is for you to crack IAS in first attempt. So in today's video, I'll be pitching about how public administration is a good optional for UPSC and let's see why you should choose public administration and fall in love with it. Right? So, now when I show this diagram, right, if you see this diagram, I have an arrow mark which is hitting the globe. What do I mean by this? Well, in the next slide, to be more clear, see, when I'm speaking of public administration, or let me say administration, there is a word which has been exclusively associated with the state. Right? When I say state, what is a state? Well, you see, a state is something that takes care of the citizens. It might be a king, it might be a military, it might be, you know, our uh, democratic setup where we have parliament, executive and judiciary, the state is something that takes care of the citizens, right? The state is responsible for the formation of society. Now, whatever work the state does is nothing but administration. That is, when it starts taking care of its citizens, it needs to implement those processes. For example, it needs to give food, it needs to provide shelter, in a democratic country like India with the socialist economy. So the state has to implement all these projects. This implementation and the policy making part is nothing but the functions of the state. And all these are studied in administration. And when I say public administration, it is nothing but how best the state serves the society. Right? When I say public administration, it is how best the state serves the society. And this is what you'll be studying in the optional. You guys want to become IAS officers, you want to, you want to become administrators, and which other subject than public administration? Yes, there are myths about public administration. I'll be breaking those myths. But you will be learning firsthand about how administration runs. This is the benefit of taking public administration and there are extra added advantages to taking public administration. I'll be discussing them. So, now why choose public administration as an optional, right? Yeah, and everyone would be wondering, as I said, why choose? Yes, you guys want to become administrators, this is the right optional. But is that the qualification for you to take up public administration as an optional? Is there any other benefit to this? taking the public administration as an optional. See, the most important benefit that you'll get in taking public administration as an optional is what I call as 500 plus advantage. What is this 500 plus advantage? The optional is only for 500 marks. How will I get 500 plus marks taking this optional? Well, you see, the best part of this optional is the overlap that it has with other general studies papers. If you see with GS1, we have approximately 10% overlap. With GS2, we have 80% overlap. GS2 paper is nothing but public administration if you remove the international relations part, right? With GS3, we have approximately 40%. And with GS4, that is your ethics paper, we have 60%, right? This is the amount of overlap that public administration has with GS papers. That is why when you're preparing for public administration, it's parallelly preparing for GS papers. This is the best advantage you can get with this optional. And that is why I say 500 plus advantage. When I say 500 plus, what I mean is you can score more than 500 plus marks, including your GS papers and the public administration optional. That doesn't mean you get 500 on 500 in public administration. That is highly impossible if you know about UPSC exam. And we find that the average scores for public administration, see, average scores 
in terms of 2020 we find it is 260 and 2021 we find it is 265 right this is the average score of public administration as an optional and is one of the top average scores in all, among all the optional subjects right people are scoring minimum of 260 to 265 in their optional in public administration of optional and it is not a small count to we find that almost 11 to 13% of the candidates choose public administration as their optional yes 11 to 13% of the candidates are choosing public administration as their optional that is almost one in every 10 candidates have pub, uh, as their optional why are they choosing this well you get your 500 plus advantage you find that your scores can be maximized some of the myths that are associated with public administration the topics are very big the syllabus is huge well to be frank the syllabus is concise simple right and easy to understand the syllabus is not huge best part it overlaps with your gs and it's like parallel preparation and you find that the syllabus can be covered within a span of 4 months right and even during your exam time revision becomes easy because it's like you're almost preparing for these papers when you're preparing for pabad right so the first myth that the syllabus is huge is false the second myth that questions are difficult to understand in public administration yes i do agree that there are some questions which are difficult to understand but the difficulty in understanding comes because people have not understood the topics rightly right they have studied but they have not understood when there is lack of understanding then definitely you take any optional you want to be able to understand the demands of the question take even your gs even in your gs paper most of them do not understand the demand of the question because they have not understood the concept accurately right so the second myth that questions are difficult is false right thirdly what they say is there is no use of taking public administration you don't uh, find that there is a market outside for public administration well if you are confident of getting into government services this is the right way you can score very good amount of marks and you find that consistently toppers are come from pabad you find 2019 rank the getting the first rank right yet public administration is optional we have found that nowadays that you know an average score of 300 is easy with sufficient amount of hard work and practice of public administration right now the fourth myth sources are very diverse see in generally in other optionals we say the sources are very diverse well we have a myth that you know in public administration all the topics are scattered right yes true they are scattered because of the amount of specialization that people have done on the subject right since it's been a popular optional everyone has written books regarding pub- public administration and this is where people say read that book read this book so there are so many books what to read right this is your question well there is simple answer read the syllabus take your syllabus read the syllabus it becomes very easy only read those topics which you need to read from those particular books don't read the complete book well i'll be teaching about this in my optional when i start taking classes i'll be even giving out handouts where you find that there is no need for other books but if you anyway want to buy purchase some books definitely purchase those books only for particular topics if possible try to read it in libraries if those books are available now these are the advantages that you have when you choose public administration as an optional now what is the syllabus of public administration well when you come to paper 1 what do you find you find introduction to public administration see in paper 1 this chapter administrative thought and administrative behavior these are the two big chapters which you have to study which will consume time and these are very very important chapters because alone from these two chapters you get approximately 120 marks worth of questions right alone from these two chapters and if you understand this chapter second and third it's almost you have understood the complete pabad paper 1 public administration paper 1 becomes very easy with this and the rest of these right they are nothing but a component or you can say they are integrated with your gs let's say pabad paper 
and GS paper two and GS paper four. All these are integrated with your all these three papers. So there is a large overlap over. If you take financial administration again, it is integrated with your GS three. About budgeting, budgetary processes, fiscal policy, monetary policy. Again, you're reading your GS3, and when you see public policy, personal administration, development dynamics, all these are nothing but a component of your GS2. These are very simple topics which you will definitely have to study anyway in your general studies. That is why I'm saying public administration gives you that added advantage where you find that because of this overlap, you don't have to study extra, right? If you take other optionals, generally you have to give extra time to those optionals. You have to study extra, right? And even during exam revision time, you have to devote a certain amount of time separately for that. Whereas in public administration, you have this benefit of easy revisions and repeated revisions. Is it not, right? So this is. The syllabus of paper one, and when you get into paper two, this is nothing but your GS two paper. There is nothing different. See, evolution of Indian administration. You will be dealing with Mughal administration, British administration, which comes in your GS one paper, right? Then, other than that, philosophical and constitutional framework, preamble, all those parts, public sector undertakings, union government, all these are nothing but your GS two paper and GS three paper and GS four. There is nothing extra to be done for. Public administration paper two. If you are well versed with your GS paper two and GS paper three, definitely there is nothing much extra. Don't believe my words. Let me take you to the next part. Let us have a look at the questions that have come in public administration paper two. If you see the questions, then you'll understand which is this paper. This is GS two paper or is this public administration paper two? When you see the first question, see for example the preamble. So the Constitution of India provides a foundational framework of ideals and values for the Indian administration. Discuss. This is nothing but it's speaking about preamble, and when we speak about preamble, we are speaking about GS Paper Two, isn't it? And see, second question: Constitutionalism. Third question is on good governance. Fourth question, speaker. Fifth question, union government. Right. So you find district collector. All the questions which come in your GS paper two, which come in your GS paper three, appear in public administration paper two, and it is fairly easy to answer if you have got the sufficient amount of knowledge, right? And the best part is you can use the same knowledge that you have studied in paper two in your GS papers too. That gives you the extra added advantage, right? That's what we call as complementary, or what you say as in one shot, two birds, right? This is the advantage you get with respect to public administration. Now, you guys might be wondering, okay, public administration, which are the books I should refer? Everyone would be willing to refer a lot of books, isn't it? And I've just shortlisted two books from each paper just to go about. If you're joining the classes, definitely uh, the notes itself would suffice. You don't have to read these books. The notes is more comprehensive, more short, concise, and you can download it. It's just below in the video link. The notes itself will uh, tell you, like how concise we can study public administration, right? But if you guys still insist that you want some textbooks, definitely these are the books to go for in paper one. These two books in paper two. These two books. There are more books. As I said, you if you want to go chapter wise, I have added the list. You can just check out the syllabus and the sources that are added in the below link, and you'll find that it's. Comprehensively covered, like which chapter, which textbook you have to read. But again, I would advise if you are having my notes, that alone should suffice, right? Now, moving on to the next one, why me? Why me, Kripal, or the IAS hub? Why to choose us? Why should you choose us? As you know, why should you choose the optional public administration firstly, and why us secondly? Well, see. I have an experience of almost six years teaching public administration, and I have developed a unique framework where I try to teach the students based on case studies method. I don't believe in theoretical studies. I believe more in case studies. That is, I present certain cases and I try to understand how students are answering that part. And next part, 
based on those case studies, I make you understand the concepts of paper one. The problem with paper one is it's more theoretical and people fail to connect that with the current day management or current affairs, right? And this is where I pitch in. I have developed this case studies approach whereby, you know, concepts have been made simple with simple examples of day-to-day -day events, of current affairs, and right, linking current affairs to public administration. This is the advantage that I give that I'll make it very easy for you. Right. Secondly, if you have a look at our notes, you'll find that the notes is more concise and you won't find such good quality notes in the market. Please do download, you'll get to know. Thirdly, what do I do? Only case studies, only current affairs? No, I even have come out with a daily answer writing practice so that your answers evolve on a daily basis. We have a daily answer writing in the class whereby the knowledge of public administration also starts getting enriched and you guys also start understanding how to write answers in public administration. So these are the other things and the rest of the things that every institution is giving, I also give the same, I also offer the same services where you know comprehensive coverage of syllabus and all the topics will be attended to, notes will be given, assistance will be given, mentorship will be given, yes, all these other aspects are we doing. But where I stand out or where we, the IA sub stand out distinctly is in this approach, case studies approach. So this is about public administration. If you are interested in this optional, please click on the link below and subscribe, right? Until then, take care.